Welcome back to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. In today's episode, powered by Hayabusa, we're breaking down the jab cross, or what some people call the one-two. In today's episode, we're breaking down one of the first types of strikes you learn, the jab and the cross. And the more I teach and the more I, I distinguish between beginner, intermediate, and advanced, I start seeing different problems transitioning between the each level. So as a beginner, you kind of learn and you get stuck in this one-two pattern and you think it's the only way to throw it. Then as you get more intermediate, you start understanding that the one-two can change depending on distance, depending on range, depending if you're kicking after, or are you really trying to put emphasis just on that rear hand? So there's a lot more that goes into that basic one-two that you've learned on your first day of training. So let's get into some of the details and the differences. When I talk about the one-two, I like to break it down into two different categories. The first one is a longer style stance, okay, where basically I'm punching and keeping my back foot into the ground, okay, I'm not moving it forward. This way, with the longer stance, I'm able to kick, so it's a little bit more kickboxing friendly. Now, I always discuss stance length is very important once you start implementing kicks into the game. So, a longer stance, okay, allows you to kick with more power. So, a lot of times as kickboxers, we don't move our back foot when we throw our straight punches. This way, I can mix that big power round kick with that nice long power stance. But, a lot of times, if kicking and ending with the kick isn't the option, you might wanna put that extra emphasis on that rear hand. So, this is where the second variation I do, which I call more of the boxer one-two. Okay, now we're gonna break down each individually so you can understand them a little bit more. Now, it's important that you understand one isn't necessarily better than the other. They all have a purpose, and depending on what you're doing with it, that's where the value in the differences come. Okay, so let's get into the kickboxing style of throwing the one-two with the longer stance. Now, when it comes to kickboxing and stances, you always have to remember that there's two main types of stances that I like to discuss. So the first one is a defensive stance. And a defensive stance means when it comes to kickboxing, right, and mixed martial arts, I would say is more of a 50-50 weight distribution, which means my weight distribution is even between my feet, which allows me to lift up both legs very easily. If I have a long stance, I can no longer lift my legs up very easily. So finding that defensive stance that allows you to lift your legs, block, okay, is very important. Now, from this defensive stance, okay, I keep my back foot planted into the ground. Now that becomes my push off, my step, my momentum, okay, my transfer of weight. So from my defensive stance, I push off that rear calf, I jab, boom, I twist the back foot. Now, Twisting the back foot in both scenarios is very important. Now, one of the biggest pet peeves when people punch is not turning the back foot. If you don't turn that back heel, right, you don't get that pivot, you lose the hit power, okay? So what ends up happening now is you're just doing arm punches. Punches come from the leg. So turning and pivoting that back foot is very vital to get power in that rear hand. Okay, whether you're doing long stance or I'm bringing my back foot in, I need to turn and get that hip over, okay? Now, the other thing when talking about this long stance versus the, 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 the shorter boxing style is understanding our shoulder positioning, okay? So we're still talking about the kickboxing stance, okay? So defensive stance, I step off into a long stance, pivot my back foot, and I twist, okay? But regardless, you see my shoulders crossing the line. I need to make sure from this side angle, this one, two, isn't enough, my shoulders are staying square. So when I step, I need to have one side, and then the back turn allows me to get my rear side in front. So a lot of the power in the one, two, comes from the shoulders and the core and my feet rotating, okay? And the big problem is, as kickboxers in this long kickboxing stance, we like to keep our feet pointing forward, right? So it doesn't give us that bladed stance to allow us to pivot and turn a little bit more. But that's okay because, as I mentioned, the purpose of a long kickboxing one-two is that longer stance to allow you to be able to kick with more power, 
Okay, so those are some of the basic things about the long kickboxing one too, okay? Longer stance, back foot stays into the ground, but you're still pivoting, getting on the ball of the foot to be able to generate the hip power and the shoulder turn, okay? Remember, this is not good. I need to see pivoting and rotation in my feet and my hips, okay? Shoulders work, hips move, and my feet pivot at the same time. That's your power generation. Now, the one-two boxing style, okay? So right away with the boxing style, I'm gonna be more in a nicer stance, okay? Similar to my defensive stance. Now, if, if, whether I'm kickboxing or MMA fighting, if no one is kicking my legs or I don't wanna kick after and maybe I, I'm tagging them with my hands, I wanna get that finished with my hands. So I'm gonna change up the one-two. Now, with this boxing style one-two, the jab is very similar, okay? I might have my front foot bladed a little bit more, right? Because I want that extra rotation. So I might have a slightly more bladed stance, right? Because I might want to be here rather than kickboxing. See, I'm staying usually square so I can power kick. But when I'm boxing, okay, I might be a little bit more bladed. So I'm here when I step, boom. Now here, my head is off center line, my stance is a little shorter, and then when I punch, I bring my back foot up as I turn it. Now bringing the back foot up, okay, boom, okay? So you can even see here, one, two, I'm long. Then bringing the back foot in for the boxing, you see right away from that angle, the difference is one, I can travel distance a little bit more. So say even in an MMA fight or a kickboxing fight, I might throw a kickboxing one, two to manage the range. And I realize, boom, that right hand just missed by an inch or two. So the adjustment I could make is maybe doing a boxing style step for the one, two, and then I can close that distance. So just missed by a couple inches, Boom, boxing step, bring my back foot up. I can close that gap, you know, to be able to land my punch more effectively, land the power, and that could be the knockout punch. So one, it closes the distance, but what it also does is it brings more weight transfer forward. Here, with the long foot back, a lot of my weight stays behind me, right? Because I wanna push and kick. But by bringing the back foot up, my weight's more forward, which means I got more weight behind that rear hand, okay? so. Boom, stepping in, bringing that weight, bringing the power, and you see my head. I talked about the head, right? Boom, here, and then when I throw that power step, boom, my head offline again. So this weight transfer here to here, okay, with the back foot coming up, my head on top of my knee, I get that extra power and emphasis, okay? So the main thing I want you to understand is the basic one-two that you learn in your first day of kickboxing needs to evolve, needs to adapt, and being in a fight, you have to be able to use both, okay? Whether you're kicking or boxing, right? And when you mix them up, it might happen where you might have to merge the two, right? I might be able to stay a little bit bladed here, make an adjustment and step. So there's different ways you can put them together or use the long one, two, in the beginning of the fight as a long one. Once you find that timing, boom, step in, get that knockout, and touch them with that big power rear hand. Now, the same concept can be applied to uppercuts, overhands, but the one, two is the classic where I really want you to understand that back foot placement and pivot, okay? Now, I've been teaching a lot here at Bazooka Kickboxing, so I'm seeing a lot of common errors. We're not pivoting enough on that back foot. Get on the ball of the foot, and I need to see more pivoting. Our hips aren't turning. Okay, so without the hip turning, I'm, not, I'm seeing more arm punches. So let's get the hip turning, get that rotation, and really work on the power. Now, the distance, all plans on that back foot. Stepping is important. Either bring the back foot up or keep it dug into the ground, but understand that there's variations that you can improve on. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Make sure you keep liking, subscribing, and sharing Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Make sure you support the channel sponsors, Hayabusa, by going to HayabusaFight.com, and make sure you check out all their fantastic gear. We've got Perfect Sports Nutrition, all linked below, BazookaShop.com, and last but not least, BazookaTraining.com, where I teach you basically four workouts and lessons each week. Every Monday, you get four brand new videos, plus a huge archive now that has more than 100 videos for you to learn. There's always something for you to learn. Four brand new videos, sparring drills, tutorials, home drills, and bag work, okay? Four different videos each week for you to learn. All right, keep liking, subscribing, sharing, and we'll see you next time here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Welcome to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA Online Training. I'm Bazooka Joe Valtellini, the owner here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. 
Over the past year, I've designed and created a website to teach bazooka curriculum at home and across the world. The purpose of this website is for you to one, hit your fitness and health goals, all while learning world-class martial arts instruction from me. The beautiful thing about this website, it's geared for all levels. So if you're learning martial arts for the first time as a beginner, we help you progress into the bigger stages. And if you're a pro fighter, guess what? We have different fight concepts for you to improve your tool set and your skills in the ring or cage. As the fastest rising kickboxing world champion and a lifelong martial artist with over 30 years of experience, I've been able to combine my passion for martial arts and teaching to create this website. This website's gonna give you some of the tricks, secrets, and inside look at some of the training I use to win my world title. Once you subscribe to this site, you're gonna be getting weekly training videos and tutorials that you can do from anywhere. The sections are broken up into three parts. The first is bag workout. So if you have a bag at home or at your gym, you can use these workouts to supplement your training. The second is at home workouts. A lot of us don't have the room for a bag or a bag in general, so these workouts are for no equipment needed and you can do them anywhere. And finally, the tutorial section. If you're having any problems with a specific technique or fight concept that's covered in any of the workouts, go to the tutorial section, learn the technique, and then go back to the workout, and this time, do it with proper technique. One of the added benefits once you subscribe is the forum section, where you can get a more personalized experience where you can ask questions, and I'll be able to go in there and answer them. It's all about building a team and a community of martial artists helping each other grow. So subscribe now to get access to all the videos plus more so you can be part of the squad here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA.